happy birthday, Aries. Hello. Welcome to the Aries birthday party, the full moon of the Aries solar cycle, which was in Libra. And today on Easter Sunday, we've moved um, with the moon into Scorpio lunar. So we have some beautiful contrasts and some beautiful temperance occurring with the fire of the Aries sun, the moon in Scorpio. And also the ruling planet of Aries, Mars, is is now in back in Pisces, along with Venus and Neptune. And so there's a lot of temperance of the fiery masculine energy with the receptive um, magnetic charge of the feminine energy. And I want to acknowledge that on Easter Sunday that is that sort of meeting um, and blending of the masculine and feminine energies, which is what we're interested in as tantric travelers, that Jesus and Mary Magdalene thoroughly embodied that in the process of transformation that they volunteered, their souls volunteered to go through in their lifetime together that we are familiar with in the story of the, the beginning of the Christian church here on earth. Um, and the Aries energy of, um, you know, the crucible and the transformation of crucifixion um, is also actually, you know, that, that's, that is the energy of rebirth, birth and rebirth. And the, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of beautiful metaphorical um, entrances or portals into these stories. So I'll leave you to explore that on your own if you're interested in that. But today I really want to celebrate most of all my beautiful tantric travelers and friends who have their sun in Aries or any other planets in Aries. And I want to celebrate for all of us because we have all been going to be very powerful very cycle when both the Mars and the sun have been in the house of Aries and if you have e even if you don't have Aries in your chart in your natal chart you will be definitely have felt activated in some kind of a forward momentum if you do have Aries in your chart which I do I have an Aries ascendant which is a very powerful position to have in the ascendant as the first house Aries is, is the natural first house in the zodiac and the ascendant is of course you know outward and upward movement it's it's the energy of birth it's where it's what planet what house was on the uh, horizon at the moment of your birth so look at your ascendant sign for your own interest and anywhere else that mars or aries um, have significance in your own chart i also have mars and aries and mars rules aries so that's two pretty powerful fire positions and just to give you an example, that is tempered by having Venus in Pisces in my chart. So Mars in Aries is like the ultimate masculine energy. Um, and Venus in Pisces is like the ultimate feminine energy. So when those two are combined, it's, it's the crucible of fire and water together and can be powerful, transformative energy. Oops. So I'm, I'm traveling right now, actually. Sorry, there's some, some cards falling and some people doing their job around me. So uh, there might be a little bit of an interruption, just one sec. So at the very beginning, I started traveling just kind of by chance, I think, or it was some kind of an unconscious uh, momentum that became fully conscious over the last month. But I've been traveling for a full month now and it's been places that I've never been before, so completely new, which is, you know, the energy of the fool. But I also had this powerful, masculine, fiery thrust and drive to move forward, to go where I haven't been before, to travel quickly, um, to, be, to be curious, to be adventurous, and it has been that. Um, I've been in a lot of really diverse places in the country that I live in. And right now, I'm actually finding myself ending up in a really beautiful city called the City of the Flowering in the state of Veracruz, or True Cross, that translates into 
in, in Mexico. And I'm very happy to be here to celebrate this season of, of the crucible of transformation and of rebirth, the soul's rebirth and the rebirth that we all experience in the season of spring that Aries really ushers in, you know, um, really ushers in fully because, because the equinox occurs at the very end of Pisces just as we transition from Pisces to Aries. So whereas Pisces um, would be, you know, if we're talking about the frequency of Aries and what it means to everyone, Let's talk about the frequency of Pisces, too. You can watch my Happy Birthday Pisces reading from uh, a month ago and get an idea of that. But Pisces is the 12th house of the known Western Zodiac. So what Pisces really holds, Pisces is like the portal between this life and the next. And that goes from, um, you know, when you're in the womb, when we are in the womb, and when we're coming in, when our soul is about to come into a new lifetime here on earth and also when we're departing um, you know when we're really our, our soul is transitioning from our earthly life and our earthly material chariot body um, to another plane and Aries being the first house in the Western Zodiac so it's our perception from here on earth and that's you know that's what we're going to go with here um, so Aries is the child being born so the actual head first exit from the womb. And, you know, we, we give mothers, we give um, delivering mothers a lot of credit and they deserve it. But let's give ourselves and let's give ourselves as babies being born a lot of credit because it is probably the most difficult and um, risky thing that we ever do in, in any of our, any lifetime is you know make our entrance into a new world that ostensibly we are completely unfamiliar with we're not fully equipped maybe to to handle um but we have that drive we have that life drive which is the spark of you know the human soul to exist exist here on earth and the head first momentum of the ram um, and Aries rules everything that has to do with the head, the hair, the teeth, um, the eyes, uh, and light, you know, the fire, the sun that has just moved um, through the equinox into towards summer solstice in the northern hemisphere here. Um, and yes, so this impetus to be born and the natural, you know, the process that's really we're supposed to be turning ourselves around and kind of diving through the veil to find our way to the light. So it's kind of interesting because sometimes you have to go down to come back up. <laughs> I'm just kind of channeling all of this right now for you guys, but um, Aries, as, as I know from my own experience and my own perceptions and self-perceptions and watching other Aries people around me, whether it's sun, rising, Mars, even Venus. I mean, encountering somebody with Venus in Aries is very, very beautiful because it's usually a lovely blending of the masculine and feminine energies and, a, and an interesting understanding of what it's like from both sides, just as Venus, um, Mars and Venus would be that way as well. Uh, yeah, so let's see, what else can we say about Aries? Hmm. Um, I was looking and trying to see famous people that um, were born with the sun in Aries, and I did find very interesting that there are a few things. There's a lot, there are a lot of um, actual, like, conquerors, actual, you know, generals or um, people that throughout history, throughout recorded human history, people like Mehmet of Turkey, and there was another Turkish conqueror in a century before him who really you know moved forward and took took land and developed civilization were, was the first impetus were the first impetus for developing civilization in certain parts of the world um, so they had that forward vision you know and they had that momentum and that kind of stubborn um, 
uh, unnostalgic. Um, you know, sometimes there's not a lot of compassion going on because it's all in the head, it's all in the plan, it's all in the forward momentum. Um, so you, you have to do what you have to do to get where you want to go and to be where you want to be. And they were successful. And maybe, I don't know what the astrology was of their time, but maybe these type of people um, were positioned at a time when Mars was very active in its own house or in another, another house that is ruled by a fire sign. So anyway, there were other people too that I found really interesting and it makes sense. There were a lot of filmmakers. There were a lot of people who were involved in film. Um, Charles Chaplin, Kurosama, who made The Seventh Samurai. You probably know Charles Chaplin, the silent film actor who was so innovative and so expressive of the human condition. And his eyes were so expressive. And Aries do have beautiful eyes and fiery eyes. And Charles Chaplin also made a movie, um, what was it called, The Little Dictator, which is really interesting because his time was, you know, during, before and during World War II, and he made a movie about, about Hitler and about that kind of power taking, and Hitler might have been an Aries, I don't remember right now, but um, yeah, that kind of, that masculine, compassionless, heartless, all in the head, um, kind of energy is like the shadow side of Aries and he made that movie and I find it to be brilliant and I always loved his work. In addition to that, Mary Pickford, who was uh, a female actress, I believe she was born in Canada even, um, she was very famous and she was a silent film actress at the same time and she was also an Aries. Um, who else? Vincent van Gogh was an Aries. And, you know, he had that vision, like we're talking about vision and like the visual and a way of seeing. And he also had a very fiery kind of, you know, solar or star-like quality in a lot of his most famous work. Um, and even though he could and should probably have been discouraged by the lack of interest and the criticism of his work, as we know during his lifetime, he, um, he kept going. And maybe he believed in himself or maybe he didn't but there was something inside of him there was a drive and an ambition to fulfill his destiny and i also love one of his famous pieces which is i think it yeah it's a skull with a cigarette <laughs> and cigarettes and tobacco are a frequency of aries and i actually by some unconscious motive <laughs> bought a pack of cigarettes last night so I'm going to use these um, to channel the energy. It's, it's a good tobacco, actually. I like these guys. I don't smoke that often. But anyway, so tobacco has that Aries energy. And Aries people generally really like to smoke. And they like ovens and fire. And they like working and being involved in things that have to do with babies, very small children, ovens and fire there's going to be something like that also engines you know like it could be um an engine mechanic or you you know you could i don't know you could be some kind of a, a fuel chemist or have an interest in petroleum something to do with petroleum and that kind of rocket launcher um not the weapon but the you know the rocket fuel energy because that's what it is it's that burst and if you look at the symbol for the planet of Mars, it's a circle, right, with the arrow pointing upwards. It's like an arrow coming out from, from the earthly head perception. And Venus is the circle with the cross at the bottom. And actually that was translated into the, um, the story, the metaphor, the, the life that we know or we've been taught about Jesus and his crucifixion. So, you know, Jesus with his halo and with his crown of thorns. And thorns, you know, are again, they're kind of like that horny, thorny, arrowy energy. They are the aspect of the rose that is the shadow aspect of Aries energy, whereas Venus is the actual flower of Aries energy. And also, I mean, we all have access to these energies and a red rose to me, a red flower and a red rose in particular, does really remind me of Aries and your beautiful energy, dears. Um, 
yeah and venus you would see you know it's the circle so the consciousness of all um all frequencies 360 right so that would be like all frequencies in on the planet all frequencies in our solar system all frequencies in the galaxy all frequencies in the universe so it's that spirally energy but then the cross um the cross brings it down and the cross you know the other stroke of the cross um brings it and holds it on the frequency of the earth plane you know this is this is the frequency of the earth plane here and this is the frequency of the ethereal or heavenly plane um but anyways yeah let's let's remember aries and that you know the circle which you know it's the head it's the earth it's systems it's cycles but then the arrow outwards and it's that electro energy electricity is also a very Aryan um, a very Aryan concept and you could if you're an Aries you could have some aspect of your life or work that's really involved closely with you know the the pure or basic concepts of electricity and light and I guess that kind of that ties in with filmmaking and movies and um, you know the film the famous filmmakers that um, were involved uh, or sorry were or are Aries um, all of those sort of elements get combined with that as well as the visual as well as the thinking as well as the innovation for people who you know really started out early in film so it's very beautiful um, I also did happen to notice that I know a lot of Aries who are cooks or bakers so if you're if you have friends or lovers that you want to get a birthday present for or a gift at any time and they're in Aries they like stuff that have, has to do with cooking baking fire heat ovens you know you could build like a custom pizza oven for your girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, that a wood pizza oven in the backyard. You would also, they would also like saunas and temescals, you know, that clay kind of igloo that you bring hot rocks, you heat up the hot rocks on the fire outside and you bring the hot rocks in and steam it up. Um, what else do Aries like? So yeah, Aries aren't as much drinkers as smokers and that could involve a few substances, including tobacco, which is, in the vibration of Aries. And coffee is also in the vibration of Aries. I brought some here, although I already had my two cups today. This is, Veracruz is one of the most famous coffee regions on the planet, and the coffee's amazing. And I got this at a place called Cafe del Portal, so I thought we could open the portal today. And by the way, if, if you are friends with me, um, and you know that I sometimes send gifts from Mexico out to other places on the, on the planet, I am now selling coffee from Veracruz. So just contact me at my private email, which you will see listed below. And I can give you prices and you know shipping costs and everything because if you're into coffee, if you're an Aries, like this coffee is literally off the planet. <laughs> Co coffee is a Martian substance actually. Um, so yeah, and coffee flavor is also good, but the, it's the power, it's the cerebral firing that coffee produces, as well as the red berry that the coffee plant has, um, as it ripens, as the cherries ripen in the sun. Um, the roasting of the coffee using that fire, and the making of the coffee with water that you've heated, usually. So if you wanted to temper your Aries energy, you might drink iced coffee instead, or like as I was mentioning with the Temescal, you might want to go with, instead of just a fire hot heat sauna, dry sauna, you might want to go with like some steam in that to temper your energy. Because too much of the fire Aries forward impetus energy can be kind of dangerous for yourself and others. Just saying, just saying. I've got this candle burning here to some incense going so in case you thought I didn't have any fuego I do let's light relight this incense sandalwood which is another very masculine wood so if you
you want to honor the Aries energy, you can uh, burn some sandalwood incense. Let's call in the energy of Mars to guide and protect this reading and this channeling. Beautiful Mars energy, that masculine power, that masculine drive, that masculine impetus, the impetus of the baby being born, the impetus of electro, of the electromagnetic energy, so the electron, um, so beautiful. And we need it. And spring, you know, spring is the bud of the rose. Aries is the bud of the rose. And as the season progresses and we get into Taurus, the rose opens and that's the flowering season. We're about to jump into that um, in a few days. So yes, Aries fire. Um, I was kind of thinking about Aries. Oh, there are a lot of criminals. <laughs> <laughs> like really famous criminals who were Aries, you know, Bonnie and Clyde, Clyde Barrows, I think his name was, he was an Aries. So he went on like a gunfire rampage, robbing and um, terrifying people with his partner, Bonnie. I don't know what her sign was, but you can check that out. There were also some, um, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, Aries, and I'm not pointing any fingers because I've got my Aries rising and Mars and Aries, but there were some like psychotic people. <laughs> there were some famous psychos, serial killers and murderers and stuff, and that can also kind of show you if there's too much mental energy, and the mental energy is is being like over um, overstimulated by fire, by too much fire and air in the chart. Maybe, maybe these people did not have any water or earth in their chart, um, but that kind of psychosis, I've seen it even in areas that I've met. Um, they can be very curious, they can be very um, childlike, which is beautiful, they can be very innocent, they can be very forward moving, they can accomplish things quickly, they're good leaders for the first part of a project, they're good initiators, but if they smoke too much weed or smoke cocaine or they have too much fire in their chart or they don't temper themselves, they can be really, really angry um, easily, they can be jealous, very competitive. If they don't channel um, their sense of competition into like a self competition, um, like self loving and you know, self motivating and achieving kind of energy, then they can pick somebody out as an opponent. Because, as you know, the Rams they move forward when there's resistance, right? So sometimes Aries in too much Aries energy, or too much fire energy, sort of seeks resistance in order to motivate them. And they perceive that as being in other human beings sometimes. And because I have some of that in my chart, I've definitely been perceived as an Aries individual opponent, individual's opponent more than once. And actually, um, I could name a couple enemies. You know, I don't have a lot of enemies, but there's a couple individuals, there's a couple humans that, you know, really, really gave me some trouble. And maybe they're they are proud of that or they cultivate that kind of energy, but I think we should all try and, um, you know, look at our shadow side and bring our shadow side to consciousness without involving the injur injury of other people. So, you know, if you do have Aries in your chart or Mars placements and you know that they can be problematic in ways that you're thinking or perceiving um, yourself and other individuals, then I really encourage you to work on that and to find creative ways to temper it with other, to temper the Aries energy with other aspects of your psyche, your heart, your soul, your thoughts, words, and actions. Um, so, so that, you know, you're really seeing what the effects of those things can be and that energy can be in the long term rather than just, you know, kind of jabbing forward at somebody um, or something and injuring yourself and maybe other people. Um, so, yeah, the, the shadow side or like an extreme of Aries energy, I was thinking, would be somebody high on crack um, without a helmet on, you know, full throttle on a Japanese motorbike. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs>
Um, if you're an Aries, you, you might really like motorcycles, actually. Um, yeah, wear a helmet. <laughs> Aries often have, you know, beautiful eyes, like really interesting eyes, like almost like enchanted kind of ram's eyes, you know? And the sides of their head or their forehead can be prominent. Their hair can be kind of um, sometimes curly because you've got that spiraling motion of the ram's horns. And everybody knows curly hair people can be nuts, so. <laughs> I tried to do something Aries-like with my hair today, but. <laughs> but Aries is renowned for having beautiful or interesting hair. You know, I'm almost thinking of Beethoven. I don't, I don't think he was an Aries, but just that crazy kind of hair. Aries can kind of have that. Um, yeah, it's, it's really lovely. And, and of course, because Aries does have the childlike or the baby energy, they will often be like kind of trying to get away from the womb, you know, so they like to have adventures and to travel. They don't like to necessarily be in the same place for long periods of time, or they like to have a break from that, especially in April. They like to move out and go somewhere, usually somewhere, you know, hot and kind of different and adventurous. As far as um, drinking goes, if Aries do drink, they definitely drink a spirit so it would be something like mezcal tequila whiskey jack daniels um bourbon sorry not jack daniels maybe jack daniels but bourbon something that's like renowned for being distilled over over fire you know um could even go cognac i would go cognac if i were you so aries does not like bubbles and wine and you know excessive amounts of of lubricant that way. Aries likes to light it up, baby. So yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful birthday season and a wonderful Aries season. If you have uh, an Aries placement and even if you're just celebrating with the rest of the planet. And as I mentioned, you might be feeling like a lot of, you might be going through a lot of transitions right now because Mars was in, um, in the house of Aries, which is its home now. And then, you know, just recently, I think it's in one degree of Pisces today. So, you know, going back and forth like that, that, that can be really beneficial. And if you look at it that way, if you look at it as having a taste of both sides of the coin and, and being tempered, then we can use this energy to really learn a lot about ourselves. And even if you feel like you're being slowed down a little bit by the watery energy of Pisces, what it's doing is it's taking you back to realign you with your soul's impetus rather than um, just sort of a thoughtless, full speed ahead, full throttle kind of momentum. So you're gonna maybe go, be going back, if you started a new pro project when Mars was in Aries, you'll be going back to look at what your true motivation is for doing it and maybe to align some of those um, some of those ideas more with your soul's purpose in a more tempered way so it's actually really beautiful and everyone can be enjoying that now as tantric practitioners mars and pisces is a beautiful placement we are really looking at the masculine perception of um, you know its feminine side its feminine half so that can be in partnership or that can be within ourselves um, there could be some cleansing, some purification of the cauldron going on here. Um, so the fire below the cauldron has been tamped down a little bit and maybe it's time to scrub that cauldron out. If you're a feminine, um, no matter what your sign is, um, this could be uh, womb purification. You might even be experiencing some interesting kind of hormonal fluctuations right now, no matter what stage of life you're at, because the influence of Mars and of Venus are so powerful um, upon, upon our physical selves hormonally that we are all probably feeling it right now in some way, masculines and feminines, men and women. Um, so yeah, hormonal fluctuation is being tweaked right now and the masculine may be veering a little bit more into feminine interests um, traditionally feminine interests or exploring aspects of themselves even appearing more feminine the way that they're attiring that we're attiring ourselves and doing our hair and speaking can be softer um, with Mars and Pisces 
Um, so I'm really happy about it. I think it's beautiful. And I want to do a bit of it might be 18 plus. It might be on this beautiful Easter Sunday. Um, so I'm going to offer three different substances. One's going to be pile one is going to be the Lucky Strike. Siggies. Pile two is going to be the Red Red Roses. Beautiful red rose, which is kind of like, you know, Mars floating in Pisces here. And pile three is going to be the Veracruz Cafe. It's in... Look at this. Now that is some good stuff. So let's put some coffee beans here on the computer stand. And let's do this quick, guys. Full throttle, right? So for pile number one, lucky strike, people. Lucky strike. Okay, just channeling through this pack of smokes that you pick that you might want to smoke. Um, I'm, I'm feeling right now just from the word lucky strike and this, you know, this red orb, which really looks like Mars. I'm feeling that there could be an opportunity that you are seeing. And it says slow cured original. So I feel like you might have just gone through a healing process and that 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 you're going to be re actually receiving an opportunity or something that you do suddenly, quickly, will unexpectedly pay off. It could even be like, kind of like winning a lottery, like getting a job that you really want, um, earning some money. Um, if you gamble, <laughs> I don't want to encourage that, but if you do gamble, it could be, you know, yeah, luck at the casino. Um, it could be just an idea that takes off really, really quickly. You could, a new, a new client or a new offer could come in that brings you, uh, you know, a boon brings a, a beautiful energy to your to your life. Like Lucky Strike was kind of like when people were drilling for oil too, right? Um, yeah, and actually at the beginning of my my Aries journey, Aries is the emperor in the tarot and it's also got a little bit of the fool energy too, that impetus, you know, full steam ahead. Um, but at the beginning of my journey, I was actually on a beach that was directly beside the petroleum, one of the biggest petroleum ports in Mexico. So you could see the excess um, gas was, was flaming like a torch um, just, you know, a few kilometers away from where I was, where I was exploring and swimming in this beautiful like desert right beside the ocean. It was pretty dramatic. And yeah, so that petroleum energy for you guys could be significant, could be a new car for you. Let's just see. Let's just ask, what new energies has this Aries cycle aligned for you? Okay, I know we're going into Taurus soon, so what new energies has this Aries cycle aligned for you. Lucky strike. <sighs> okay, I'm going to lay these out and actually just draw. What new energy has this Aries cycle aligned? Wow, look at that. We actually have temperance. That's incredible. So you may have learned how to temper your fire energy or how to temper your impetus to move ahead and start something new and you're actually being rewarded with maybe a little bit of, um, of redefining of the goal that you had set for yourself with this um, lucky strike kind of energy. Maybe it's paying off by really being two centimeters to the left of where you were gonna dig and maybe that's where, you know, that's where the black gold is. <laughs> Temperance is also that, that energy of the crucible and transformation, um, you know, through profound, profound effort looking deeply within ourself and taking advantage of the healing energies that are around us right now. Oh my gosh. And this, this is the Aries energy. There's the fool. So for you, I actually do feel like you actually could be about to travel or you are traveling or have been traveling and you've regained some confidence in really trusting your intuitive compass for which direction to go in. And that can be literal. That can be like a renewed sense of direction as you're walking around a city that you're unfamiliar with or a country 
or just like um, an instinct of to go here now and you meet the right person who is very influential or beneficial to your career goals uh, or even a relationship. Um, let's get one more. Oh, and we have the Knight of Pentacles. So yeah, the Knight of Pentacles means that something that you've been kind of waiting for for a long time with the combination of these cards, because you tempered your energy and you were patient when you saw your opportunity, and it could have been an airy season or still, still going on now, when you saw your opportunity, you took it. And really, this is, the Fool talks about limitless potential. It's like the zero, you know, you can see the blank face or the head with this energy that kind of looks like, you know, the arrow kind of crossing through the head like the Mars energy. So that's really cool. That's tried and true, pure Aries impetus. So if you have an opportunity to travel now and it feels right, take it. The angels are guiding you. The angels angelic influence is also temperance. Um, and, and then we've got, you know, earth is encouraging you too. And this could be as things slow down as we go into Taurus. Um, you can take your time and look at the details more. I, I see, yeah, I see lots of good opportunities for exploration, adventure, and possibly even um, some material abundance for you coming in with these energies, you lucky strike. Okay, so enjoy this Easter, Easter weekend, and thank you for joining me, Tantric Travelers Who Chose Lucky Strike, and we'll see you soon. Again, if you're interested in the coffee or you want a private reading, look at my um, contact info below. I'd be happy to give you that information on, on rates. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so the next pile. What was the next pile? Oh, the next pile is the red, red rose. Aw. So pretty, that color. There's no color like that. Beautiful rose rose. Okay, so... Red Rose People.